Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's video we are making the coolest tumbling tower block puzzle DIY slash Dollar Tree Jangle Block Wood Decor DIY. There are three variations of this super cool woven decor puzzle out of Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks. Those are the Dollar Tree Jingle Blocks. This unique and interesting puzzle looks complicated, but it's really simple. You'll amaze your friends with this thought twister puzzle made out of wood. Great for anyone's decor and a super thoughtful gift and so much fun too. So stick around and let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I'm using a full box of the Tumbling Tower Blocks. That's the 72 block pack. And each of our puzzles, we use all 72 of the blocks in rows of two. So we'll be making 36 rows of two blocks glued end to end. And we're using the Tight Bond Quick and Thick Wood Glue to hold the two block rows together. I'll link the Tight Bond Wood Glue for you in the description box below. Doing my best to line up the two block rows as straight as possible and sometimes with these tumbling tower blocks since lately they are often uneven or crooked or sized inconsistently so sometimes I find it better to line them up before gluing them and line them up and find the best possible partner block for each of them since they really are not the exact same size but at least this way each of my rows will look even or at least at least look straight enough for our purposes for this project. I glue all 72 blocks from this box into rows of two, and then I let them dry for several hours. For this first puzzle, I'm going to be using Varathane Wood Stain in the color Ipswich Pine. I'll link it for you below. And I'm using this color to stain the 36 rows that we have here. I wanted a natural wood look, but with a tiny bit more depth to it than just a plain clear sealer over the wood. So this brings a little deeper golden wood color into it for this very first natural wood look puzzle that we're doing. I'm applying the stain to all sides of the row, including the ends, because we will see all the sides of each row in the finished puzzle. There is no back to this project. There's nowhere to hide. Everything has to be covered. I use a baby wipe to rub off some of the excess stain on each of the rows because I don't want the color to get too deep. I still want a lighter, natural wood look to this. So I did one coat of the stain and wiped off any of the excess and then I set those aside to fully dry. While the first puzzle is drying, I start work on the second puzzle. And we're making this puzzle exactly the same way as the first one. We're using a full box of the 72 tumbling tower blocks. And we're going to glue that entire box using the tight bond wood glue. We're gluing the whole box into rows of two blocks each, glued again end to end. So after we're finished gluing this box, we'll end up with 36 rows of two blocks each, just like we did in DIY number one. For this second set of 36 rows, I'm using a mixture of an apple barrel matte white acrylic paint, which I will link for you below. I mixed that with plain water to thin it all out, and I'm using a generous amount of that mixture on my blocks, and then rubbing the entire row off with a dry paper towel because I want to get like a whitewashed look on all of these rows, but I fully want to see the wood grain coming through. So I add more paint mixture as needed and then wipe that away as needed too. And again, like in DIY number one, I cover all the sides, including the ends of each row with the whitewash color because there is no back to this project. So we can't afford to have a quote unquote bad side of the finished product to hide behind. These are all three dimensional puzzles. Every side is visible. On some of the rows, I did end up going back and adding some more whitewash to them because I didn't feel there was enough color showing up. I ended up doing a second coat on about half of them and then I put those aside to dry and they do dry pretty quickly. 
And while those are drying, we'll start to work on our third and final puzzle. And again, we begin the exact same way as the first two puzzles. I am using a full box of the Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks. That's 72 blocks, and I'm going to glue them all into groups of two blocks, glued end to end. So we're gonna end up with 36 rows of two blocks each. I told you, I used three full boxes of Jenga blocks, exactly. No more, no less, and I was actually shocked that all 72 blocks in all three boxes were usable. Like, that, that never happens. It was a tumbling tower block miracle. For this puzzle, I'm painting it with a mixture of plain water and folk art home decor antique wax. I'll link it for you below. I add the water to thin out the wax because I wanted the wood grain to show through the deep, rich brown color of the wax. So I apply a generous amount to each row and all of the sides. Again, that's very important. And then I use a dry paper towel to wipe away the excess paint and I rub the color onto the wood in some of those spots with that paper towel. I did all 36 rows of two blocks the same way and I let it dry, although I did go back and do an entire second coat on all the 36 rows once they were dry because when it dried the first time the color was not deep enough. I needed it to be darker so that it contrasted better with the other two puzzles which are on the later side. So after a second coat I set it aside to dry. Now all three of the puzzles are dry and I'm going to assemble each of them one at a time for you. Even though they're all assembled the same, I think the repetition will help you learn how to put them together faster. So starting with our natural color puzzle, I have my 36 rows, which I'm going to call puzzle pieces from now on. First, we put three puzzle pieces down on the thin side vertically. Then place one puzzle piece down laying across them on the flat side horizontally. Then we take four more puzzle pieces and we're going to stand them up with the flat side facing us. And they go in between each of our first row of thin side vertical pieces, as you can see me standing them up here. Then another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. Then four more puzzle pieces that are standing straight up with the flat side facing us, like that first row of standing straight up pieces. Then another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. Then four more puzzle pieces standing up with the flat side facing us. Then another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. Now we take three more puzzle pieces and we're going to turn them on their sides with the thin side up. And we're going to carefully slide them in between our rows of standing up puzzle pieces, as you can see me do here. Then four more puzzle pieces that are going to lay on top of and then and also across the row beneath them horizontally. And be careful not to knock down those standing up ones. That's a little tricky. And those four pieces are flat side up. Then another three puzzle pieces that we turn on their sides with the thin side facing up and carefully slide them down in between our standing up puzzle pieces. Then four more puzzle pieces that will lay on top of and across the row beneath them horizontally and with the flat side facing up. Then our final three puzzle pieces that we turn on their sides with the thin side facing up and we carefully slide them down in between our standing up puzzle pieces. With puzzle number one assembled, we're going to assemble puzzle number two the same way but a little different camera angle this time so you can see it a little differently and we're starting again with the first three puzzle pieces and they're on the thin side vertically as our base for the puzzle and then we stick one piece across horizontally with the flat side facing upward 
And we take our four puzzle pieces that we will stand straight up with the flat side facing us in between the pieces on our base row. Then another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. Then four more puzzle pieces that are standing straight up with the flat side facing us in between the pieces on our base row. Then another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. Then four more that are standing straight up with the flat side facing us in between our base row pieces. And another puzzle piece resting across the bottom row horizontally. And then another three puzzle pieces that we turn on their sides with the thin side facing up and we carefully slide them down in between our standing up puzzle pieces. Then four more puzzle pieces that will lay on top of and across the row beneath them horizontally. Then three puzzle pieces that we turn on their side with the thin side facing up and carefully slide them down in between our standing up puzzle pieces. And then the four puzzle pieces that lay across the row beneath them horizontally. Then three more pieces turned on their sides with the thin side facing up and we slide them down between the standing up puzzle pieces. For puzzle number three, we assemble it the same as one and two, and I think you'll recognize all the patterns, so I'm gonna speed this up for you to watch, and you can stop and start it to follow along when you assemble your own puzzle. And this is how DIY number one, my natural wood Jenga block puzzle turned out. And of the three, I think I like this one the best. I currently have this on my coffee table in my living room and I think it is a great conversation decor piece. A close second for me is DIY number two, this whitewashed tumbling tower block woven wood puzzle. I think this one is charming and it has lots of farmhouse potential with some sanding and light distressing if that's the direction you want it to go. It could also go in a nautical direction if that's your home decor style. Number three is the most rustic of the group, which you could also distress this with some sanding or chalk paint on the edges if that's more your style. And here are all three tumbling tower block wood puzzles. Now, are they puzzles or are they decor? You tell me. Let me know in the comments if you consider these wood puzzles to be decor or entertainment or both. I'm leading toward both, but I want to know what you think. These are definitely interesting and unique, and although they look complicated, you and I both know they're really simple to put together, fun to look at, and impressive to put on display. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY, and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.